Okay. okay here we go. Um, very familiar verse, Proverbs 3 and verse 1, right? Uh, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands or commandments. Don't forget. Um, so which means remember. And uh, the second part of that verse is let your heart keep my commands. Um, so the difference between um, a superficial agreement with the command, saying that, oh, it's good. Yeah, I know everybody should do it. Um, the difference between that and a heart keeping the commandments of God is saying, oh, this is part of me. Okay, uh, I've made it personal. It's part of me. No matter what circumstance, uh, I'm going to pursue this. So that's what it is, right? Let your heart keep my commands. Um, which means let it not be just an emotional thing. Let it not be a temporary thing. Let your heart keep my commands. And, uh, and then it goes on for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Um, a similar thing we see in Psalm 112 also. Psalm 112. And I think that's verse 1. Where uh, Psalm says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Right? Who delights greatly in his commandments. Uh, we see, see that in Psalm 1 also. So the thing is, to delight greatly in the commandments of God, is to enjoy God's commandments, right? Not only things that are con convenient or things that are comfortable for us, that we are agreeing with, but also, you know, maybe to our understanding, we are like, God, I, I don't understand it right now, but it's coming from you, right? I know when it's from you, uh, you have a plan, you have a purpose, um, knowing that you are good, you know, all that is there. So. I can trust, right? So um, the command is this: that we, our heart, will keep the commandments of God, right? It's, it'll be at a deeper level, um, because if it's if it's there in our heart, then we will be unshakable. You know, we will not be reasoned out, uh, because it's gone further than reason. It's become part of our life. It becomes our lifestyle, right? So let's uh, we can pray the same thing and saying, Lord. Um, Everything about your law, about, you know, about the law of the spirit of life, or everything about your word, let it be part of my heart. Let my heart take a strong grip of it and let it not be just a casual engaging you know, with the word of God. Right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this exhortation, O oh God, that Lord, when our heart engages with your word, when your word is sown in our hearts, when we keep our, your word in our hearts, Father God, we see the blessing that one can walk in. And uh, Father God, we thank you for this exhortation. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, if there are certain areas in our lives where we are not fully engaging with your word, maybe because it's difficult for us to understand, maybe because it's um, because of the season of life that we are in, the things that we are going through, maybe it's because of hurt, disappointment, discouragement. But Lord, knowing that that instruction or that command is from you and knowing that you are good, Lord, we know that we can trust you. And so, God, we receive your word. We believe your word. We receive your word. Let your word be sown in our hearts, Master. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, um, so we today... Yeah, we are in chapter 9, right? Ministering God's Word, preparing a message. So we are basically in the final lap, okay, of uh, of all our, uh, whatever we are going to be covering. So we are going to look at different kinds of sermons and also uh, mechanics of sermon preparation. And then uh, we'll move into the practical aspect of it, where each of us, each of you will start preparing and then presenting sermons and so on. So that's the interesting part of it. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, preaching, right? So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's start. Uh, chapter 9, preparing a message, some basic guidelines. Okay. So first thing that we see is that God draws out what we put in, Okay, what we put in. Uh, like Proverbs talks about the fact that the preparation of the heart belongs to man. Okay, So we prepare ourselves. We... We engage with the Word of God, 
and we receive the word of God in our hearts. We, you know, sow the word. We intentionally do that. And when, when it comes to those moments of serving, when it comes to those moments of ministry, the Lord draws it out. Right? He draws it out. He illuminates our understanding. He does that in so many ways. Like, for example, if you if we turn to, um, let's say, look at Colossians chapter 3. Right? Colossians 3 talks about how one needs to have a rich deposit of the word of Christ. Right? Colossians 3 verse 16 it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, and so on. You know, it's the overflow of that teaching, admonishing, uh, singing, uh, all that, you know, singing in our hearts to the Lord, all that comes out of an overflow of the word of God. Word of Christ says specifically, dwelling richly in our hearts. Okay, so um, so that involves our cooperation. It's a responsibility, right? Well, God will quicken the word to us, uh, but we need to do much more than that, right? We need to study the word. We need to spend time in the word, get acquainted with the word, and beautiful things happen if we would just spend uh, some time just with the word of God, right? We alone with the Word of God. Uh, I know, as a student, Bible college students, uh, is spending a lot of time, you know, in the Bible, in the Word, and most of it would be uh, in connection with the subjects, right? Either, you know, that's the thing. Okay, this is what it says, so let's quickly turn there, refer there. This is what it is, and ass assignments and so on. But what about those times when you can just sit with maybe half a verse? Right, sitting with how, yeah, maybe, and and that just blows you away, right? Um, so, you know, and you're not able to go beyond that. You're just spending time, just um, meditating on it, just over and over again. And the Lord is giving insight. The Lord is engaging, drawing, and you're just feeling the presence of God so powerfully, right? <clears throat> so close. So, um, so those are the the things, you know, so the simple lessons that. That he teaches us when we the simple revelations that we get, hey, suddenly the light comes on on the inside, right? The switch comes on. I say, wow, it makes sense. So these are things that the Lord draws out uh, at those moments, appropriate moments. So, so it's important that our walk with the Lord is consistent. Um, you know, nothing can replace that. No Bible college education, no seminary, no doctorate, you know, nothing can replace that walk with the Lord because that is something that is so precious uh, the learnings are so enriching you know the treasure that God puts in our heart comes with the daily walk with the Lord right so so that's something that that we need to uh, make sure so intentionally we put in you know how do we do that we sow the word how do we do that we study the word we read the word study the word we meditate on the word of God or take time to just uh, dwell in the Word of God, and uh, and then the Word of God is sown in our hearts. Right? Okay. Second thing, uh, understanding that uh, if we can ministering, you know, ministering Rama versus the Logos. You know, there's a typo there. You're ministering Rama versus Logos. Let me just uh, share the screen. Sorry. Okay. So, what do we mean by that? Logos, Rama. I'm sure you've learned that, right? So what do we mean by that? Logos and Rema. Spoken. Okay. And Logos, yeah, it's a word that you Sorry, what? what? Logos is there? Logos. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, actually, the written scriptures. There's another Greek word, you no, know, which is called graphe. Right? The scriptures are God breathed. You know, that is graphe. So, so logos, of course, re refers to the word of God. It refers to you know utterance again, but it refers to a discourse, uh, maybe uh, you know something on a particular topic. Right? But when it comes to rema, rema specifically, you know, for a specific purpose. Something that is uttered, something that is spoken. You know, it's it, a lot of similarities, but if we were to understand it, 
we can say, okay, if you look at the Bible, we see those principles, precepts, instruction, commands, a lot of it is there, right? So that's the logos of God. This is God's word. God has spoken this, it is captured, it is there for us, all the precepts, all the principles, right? But the rhema is what God speaks to us at the moment, the Holy Spirit speaks to us or highlights to us at the moment. Okay, so we, we need to understand that. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to know the difference. It's uh, personal, timely, uh, for that particular need, for that particular purpose, right? So all that um, is there. So when we, yeah, written word specific to your situation, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so, so the, the the difference is why should we know the difference? Because both have value in ministry, right? See, for example, one should know the principles of God. One should know the commands. One should know the precepts. Okay, this is what God has said. This is one should know that, and also one should know that. Oh, this is what God is highlighting at the moment. Like, for example. Um, if you look at, uh, let's say, let's look at Ephesians 6, okay? Ephesians 6 uh, talks about the armor of God, right? Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6, um, verse 11, uh, verses 11 onwards. But if we go down to verse 17, it talks about the word of God, right? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that word used there is rhema. Okay, so the sword of the spirit, which means that I'm going to use it in warfare, I'm going to speak it out, I'm going to declare it, right? I'm going to take it uh, as something personal. It's, it's, it's like a weapon. The rhema is the weapon. Okay, it's so powerful because the Lord quickens it, the Holy Spirit quickens it, gives a revelation. It's a timely word. Now that's uh, the sword of the spirit. Yeah. What do you use the mic? So, like from what you do, like I was just uh, like, for example, if we are going something and uh, if we quote a scripture, uh, it is called uh, Rema word. Like if we use some scripture, like if we, uh, your grace is enough for me. If I'm praying and if I'm using this scripture in my prayer, then it is called uh, Rema word. Not necessarily. See, for example, uh, okay, now. I just quoted from Ephesians 6. We're okay, just studying it. Now that is something that is that is there. Uh, I'm just declare, I'm just you know saying teaching, I'm just looking at it, saying, okay, this is it. So it's not necessarily a rhema. Word. So a rhema would be something that is timely, that takes care of maybe um, you know, something that is highlighted, something that is revealed. Now that's why I'm saying, you know, not necessarily in the sense. We can look at it, you know, like uh, chapter 6, verse 1, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. I'm quoting that. And that's not necessarily a rhema word. It could be, like for you, you know, it's like, hey, that's exactly what I wanted. What yeah, and the spirit, the spirit of God witnesses to your heart saying, hey, this is what you need, right? So uh, it could be, but not necessarily. Every time we take a scripture and quote it, need not be a rhema. And so, uh, one more doubt, so sorry. Uh, this uh, Rema word that we are talking about can be from logos, also, can be from the moment from uh, Holy Spirit, also. Yeah, so, so the Rema is the uh, is the highlighted, the you know, quickened word of God, and the one who does the highlighting, the emphasizing, and the quicking, prompting, quickening, and the prompting is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Like if a person is yeah, so that would be word. yeah, so that would be a word in season. That would be a prophetic utterance, right? It need not be scripture and verse, chapter and verse, but it's a. It'll be a word of knowledge. It'll be a you know. It'll be a prophetic word. We we can't call it rhema. Yeah, I can't. Call it. Yeah.
Okay, that's a good question. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. So the thing is that both have their place. Both have their place. Uh, both have their value in the sense we need to be instructed in the logos and uh, ministered in the rema. Right. For example, like you know, in church we are doing a study of of Thessalonians, verse seven thing. Now we are doing a verse by verse study, uh, you know, background, etc. So, um, and from that, yes, there could be some takeaway, you know, something that is um, highlighted to us by the Holy Spirit that particular day, that particular moment, which is the the Rema. Uh, the revealed word of revel, you know, revelation from that, whatever we are studying from the logos. So, but both have their place, right? We need to we need to know the logos of God, and we need to be ready to receive the the rhema of the Holy Spirit, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Like simple example would be okay. The whole thing is thing. Whole thing is uh, logos, and then the verse out of it would be rhema. But we can't say. Every time I take a verse and share it, that's the rhema. You know, I'm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, how do we know? It is when the Holy Spirit quickens it to our hearts. So, you have a witness in your spirit, okay? And you share it. And that's a rhema word to you, which you share. But you share, and then it becomes a rhema word to them, right? And it's, it's, you may not even be aware of it. You may just be sharing. You know, you might be saying that, okay, this is what it is, and you're just teaching and you're just moving on. And then, but the Holy Spirit witnesses to them, and it becomes a rema word to them. So. Exactly, which leaps out, which stands out, which uh, which is impressed upon our heart by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, speaks to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's in um, Esod. Esod. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Colossians talks about logos. That the word of God dwell in you richly. The you word Greek word used there is logos. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we don't. We don't know. We won't know because, like, just like uh, the word love. We won't know agape. We won't know if it's filio, you know. Uh, but when we uh, we look into the Greek, it helps. Yeah. So Esod is actually a good tool to have. Yeah. Okay. So third one, while we are preparing, is of course our dependency on the Holy Spirit. See, when do we depend on someone? When we yeah, when we feel that hey, I need help. You know, I can't do it on my own. I I'm lacking in this, right? That is when we say, okay, we take the help of someone and say, I need this. But what if it's an area of strength? Right? What if if you're a naturally gifted speaker? Right? What if your knowledge of a particular subject is 101 percent, whatever? Right? Will you still depend on the Holy Spirit? Yeah. But it's difficult to depend on the Holy Spirit at that time, you know, because your natural ability is kicking in. You know, you're you're like, okay, I've done this before. It's no big deal. I can actually do it, and you will do it. Like you will do it in your own strength. You'll you'll make a fantastic presentation. You know, watertight, beautiful with all illustrations, everything. But what will be missing ingredient, which is a very very important ingredient, is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? And the degree to which the whole God would actually want to minister to people, right? The word will bless definitely, because it's His word. The word will bless people, but the degree to which the, the or maybe the the depth to which, or you know whatever the Lord wanted to highlight, uh, that we would miss out because we have not been sensitive, right? So we need to depend on the Holy Spirit for what? You know, a word in season, right? Psalm 23, hey, I've, we've read it right from when we were children. But a word in season could be 
you know, slightly different, right? Uh, for example, uh, I think we've seen this before. I, I forget which class. Anyway, Psalm 23. Let's go there. Psalm 23, verse 1. Okay. Huh? What is my good friend? Huh? Your, your where the TPD is in. <laughs> yeah, I love that version sometimes. It's nice. Okay, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, so maybe, you know, you want to, sp you know, you've been asked to preach on that and you're going and so what is your, you know, your dependency on the Holy Spirit? Because uh, you've shared this so many times, you know about the shepherd, etc. The thing is, it can be a word in season for someone because the Holy Spirit knows the needs of the people the challenges that they are going through, everything he knows. So it can be the word in season. But the Holy Spirit can give us or give the right emphasis. Like that verse, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. There can be several aspects of that verse which can be emphasized. Yes or no? You just tell me. You know, all the things, what are the things, possibilities of emphasis in that verse alone? Mm -hmm. Okay, you just use the mic, no, sorry. Like uh, the word like gives the emphasis of uh, comfort, mm -hmm. courage that, okay, God will be taking care of us. He is our shepherd. He will guide us. Okay. He okay. will approach So the last us. part, yeah. he's my shepherd. He will take care, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you just look at that verse, you know, the low Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the English, it is like uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine words. Nine words make up that verse, right? So maybe the Lord wants, the Holy Spirit wants us to emphasize on this aspect, the Lord. Okay. Who's your shepherd? The Lord. Maybe he just wants to highlight that. I've read through, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But maybe the Lord is saying, okay, I just want them to know who is your shepherd, the Lord. Who is the Lord? You know, the various names of God. Who is he? What is he capable of? What, is, what, has, what has he done? Right? The Lord. Or maybe the emphasis is my shepherd. You know, the Lord is his shepherd, her shepherd, whatever. You know, it's so easy. To preach also the Lord is you know, your shepherd, but when it comes to our struggle, our needs, you know, our, to say the Lord is my shepherd in my challenges, in my trouble, the Lord is my shepherd, or the emphasis could be the Lord is right, which means not was, not will be present. The Lord is today, here and now, is my shepherd, not so personal. And I shall not want. So you see so many things that the Holy Spirit can emphasize in just that one verse. right? So, And it can be a word in season uh, for someone. A word in season for us, personally, as we are ministering. Sometimes you, you are sharing and then you realize that, wow, I should take notes. <laughs> no, this is God is speaking to me now. You know, I wish I could. So you 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 realize that God has you know, spoken to you. Right? So... It's a word in season. A word in season is a word, a right word for that particular, whatever they are going through, right? It's a quickened word, like we saw, a word that is, you know, suddenly it's a revelation, it's an understanding. Everything seems to be suddenly, I've read it so many times, but it's it's lighting up now, it's highlighted, right? And also it's a prophetic, it could be a prophetic word, that that scripture itself, or that verse, um, it's, a, it's something prophetic, right? And uh, uh, the Lord is speaking, the Lord is directing, it's a now word. And like what prophecy does, it brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. 1 Corinthians 14. Right? Uh, maybe there's correction, maybe there's warning, whatever, and all that comes. So, so the thing is to depend on the Holy Spirit. Now, the beautiful thing is this, you know, when our heart posture is that, Lord, uh, I'm depending on you. Now, we don't have to... Be nervous, worried, stressed out. Uh, the thing is, our heart's posture is, Lord, I'm dependent on you. 
uh, I'm leaning on you, God. You speak, and I'm just going to be, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, freedom. I'm going to be sensitive, but I'm going to be a vessel. I'm going to just minister in the confidence that you've given me, right? So just go ahead and you do it. Certain times you know, wow, you know, God, you are speaking, you know, this is what you're highlighting. And certain times you don't even know. You just shared and you've, you know, you've finished and you've gone and and the things that you shared, maybe it was not even planned or maybe even planned, but you didn't think that it would be so much of an impact, but it makes an impact. Could be any of these things, right? Okay, so while preparing for a message, right, depend on the Holy Spirit. Study the Word of God, right? So we won't dwell too much on that, but study the Word of God for whatever it's, you know, um, uh, try to find out the background. It always helps. It always gives us a depth of, you know, to share, right? Um, and because God has given us knowledge, understanding, wisdom, you know, what is stopping us from studying the word, right? Um, so sometimes we think, okay, maybe if I become, you know, if I'm studying too much of the the Greek and the Hebrew and and all that, you know, it's, I'm just going to it's going to mess with my mind, right? But when, the thing is, whenever we study, we do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Right? He's the author. He's with us. We do it with the help of the Holy Spirit, saying, Holy Spirit, you speak. You lead me. You take me. And uh, there's understanding uh, that comes with it. Right? Okay. So what's the next thing? Uh, have a single topic or uh, of a single theme. Okay. Uh, now, it's it's always good to have... You know, I've heard messages where it's like a, it's like a walk in the garden. Okay, so the preacher is saying, "Okay, come, 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 everyone, let's go." So as they're going in the garden, hey, look at that tree. Have you seen that tree? Have you seen these fruits? And they're going further and then looking at something else. You know, that's nice. And after you finish the walk and you come back, uh, people will say that was a nice garden. Maybe some part of it they will understand, or something is retained, but not not all of it. Okay, so it's good as a refreshing, inspiring, motivating message. But the thing is to have, you know, if there is a single theme or a topic, it will help the hearer. Okay, it helps the hearer to to receive. It helps the hearer to retain it. Okay, and also to recall. Okay, to receive, retain, retain means what? Hold it in, right? Recall is to again bring it to memory to think about it. Okay, so it always helps. Um, so it can have many subtopics or key points. Um, always substantiate the key points with scriptural references. Now, why why do we need to do that? What does substantiate mean? Just highlight, give weightage to, right? Or Prove it. Prove that you know I'm making a I'm making a statement. Now, if I'm referring it back to the Word of God, it has some weightage, right? Because, but it and in context and so on. So it has some weightage. Meaning, yes, this is true. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, it's scriptural, right? So it has some weightage. So, uh, and also the fact is that the Word of God is what bears fruit. Right, the word of God is what brings transformation. Okay, the word of God is what renews our thinking and brings change and so on. So, um, always, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to shoot people with the verses. Da -da 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 -da, you know, uh, just go on shooting verses. You know, just fill the message full of verses. Um, not necessarily that, but then when you draw it back to the word, when you substantiate, you know, saying this is what the word says. There's, there's, there's less margin for error, because as a person who's preparing, also, you're not going off, you know, in a tangent. You're basing your message on the Word of God, right? There's less margin for error, and then people also, and we know that it's it's the Lord who confirms the preaching of the Word. Okay, He puts His approval. He says yes. He gives a witness. The Holy Spirit witnesses to people's heart. Because of the you know, the word, right, uh, and he he gives a confirmation, approval in their heart, witness in their heart. So, so there is you know they are able to receive it, they're able to agree, say 
say, say amen to that right because of um, because it's based on the word otherwise it sounds nice but maybe there's no holy spirit witness you're like hey, can this be true you know, there's a question in your mind can this be true why it seems you know how is it possible well the lord is you know he's coming i thought the second coming was the rapture but he's you know it's coming again <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 Thessalonians 1, hey, but you, then you, I don't know if you had that kind of thing you know, this Sunday, right? You see it in the word and you say, yeah, it is there, right? And so you're able to receive the truth, right? Okay. Uh, third thing, make the word applicable. What does that mean? Yeah, you should be able to really up, apply or practice it or put it to use. Right? See, some of the things will be truth, which is just to inform, educate, right? Uh, like we're st studying about the second coming, okay, inform, educate, the timeline, etc. But also it, it comes with the fact that, okay, I need to be ready. It changes our, shifts our perspective about, and shifts our priorities, right? Okay, certain things are eternal, certain things are temporary, you know, shifts our focus, right? So, um, if we as as people who are ministering the word, if we can, you know, make it applicable and say, okay, now now this is what you heard. Now this is how you can take the word, take this truth, and put it to practice in your life. Okay, so the thing is, uh, application part. There are different kinds of people in the audience, right? There could be young people, there could be people who are married, there could be people who are you know senior. So the application differs, right? For the teen. It, it'll be different for the married person because because of the season of life they are in, because of the challenges they might face. So it's it's good to think, Lord, how can I make this applicable, relevant to them? And the Lord will give ideas, right? Um, and then you can, uh, you know, when you make it applicable, they're able to just take it and uh, use it, apply it in their lives, right? Okay, stay focused on the main team, main uh, sorry topic or theme, right? Um, uh, the, the next thing is about illustrations. Uh, what are illustrations? We look at it when we can, when we look at sermon construction. But um, what are illustrations? No, no. What is an illustration actually? Illustration is a picture, something that you illustrate, something that you draw, and uh, it's it's a, it's a, it, you, it shows something, right? Depicts something. Now, when we illustrate a point, it means that you say something. Maybe give a story, maybe give an anecdote, uh, something to bring out that point, explain the point a little better, right? So that's an illustration. So when we are using illustration, it's good. Illustrations actually bring it out, make the point come alive. But we need to use it cautiously because if it's, you know, maybe something that we went through, we are saying, okay, this is how it is. Okay, so let's say, Purpose in life, okay, and I'm I'm sharing about that, and I could say something like, you know, this this is what I was doing. I was working in this company, and God called me, and uh, so I resigned and I came into full time ministry. Okay, so I'm so it's a good thing that I'm illustrating that this is how you know God's purpose and everything God's calling is. I'm just demonstrating or illustrating God's calling, but I need to be careful. Because if I'm saying this, everyone will think that, okay, this is how God calls a person. Like he calls you out of a vocation, something that you're in, maybe in the marketplace, calls you out for ministry. And ministry is what you know they see you doing. And he's saying, okay, this is what it is. So, so I should actually qualify it by saying, hey, this is my experience, right? But God, God calls you differently. God might call you to be in that place also. God might call you to do something else, you know. So I need to qualify that. So that is what we mean by saying use real life examples um, cautiously. Right? Be careful when you and uh, some of the uh, things that we went through. Maybe it was because of our own choice. Maybe it's because of you know we we can't attribute that to God. Sometimes we do that, right? I went through this. God made me fall down so that He could teach me, so that I could come up victorious. 
you know and so we need to be careful using such illustrations okay um if you look at 1 corinthians 2 and verse 5 um paul is very clear he says you know i made it a point um to teach you so that your faith may be in the power of god and not in the wisdom of man okay is that what it says 1 corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 right verses 4 and 5 it says and my speech and my preaching we're not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, minister at the spiritual level of your audience. You know, try to understand okay, where, where, what is the level of understanding that they are at. Okay. So definitely, God would want them to want everybody to go up another level, right? Or go up several levels. And the Lord is using you to minister, to teach, etc. Now, to do that, we need to understand what is their level of understanding. What do they understand about, let's say, spiritual gifts? What is their understanding, right? And start from there, right? Do they? Um, do they understand about uh, the Holy Spirit? What is the understanding of the Holy Spirit? Right? Like Paul goes and asks, right, in um, I think it's Acts chapter 19, where he asks the, the efficient leaders. One second, just give me a minute. Yeah, Acts chapter 19. Um, yeah, so so he asks, you know, this question: Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Okay, so that was his question. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Right? So, so it was not a question of receiving, or it was not a question of believing. For them, they did not even know the basic understanding that God, the Holy Spirit, God is Holy Spirit, God is Spirit, that was not there. So Paul had to, obviously, you know, teach them and so on, right? And then about baptism. So uh, minister at the level of your audience. Okay. Now, this may not be always it may, easy. Like, for example, you get invited someplace, and you go, and uh, you need to, you know, you need to preach there. You may not always be able to find out the background, right? Like you, you can, uh, you can have a conversation with the person who invited you. You know, what, you know, what are you studying these days? Uh, how old are they? What is the thing? You can just find out some background information, but sometimes it's not possible, right? So then you can actually start ministering at the level, and that always helps because um, there are no gaps. Okay, there are no gaps. They are able to grasp things, and you're able to build from where they are. Okay, so that's that's always good. Okay, um, and 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 you know, if you look at the Bible College curriculum, also, right? So it starts from Okay, ministers' foundations, identity, right, and all that. So, the, so these are certain foundations to be laid, and then build on other things, right? So, so that's the thing. Okay, any questions? Anything that you want to share? Yeah. Okay. And Pasi, you were te you were telling about the uh, like we should. Um, minister at the spiritual level of our audience so um i mean not everyone is going to be at the same spiritual level so how do you guys do it okay so yeah that is true like you'll have people of varying spiritual mature maturity and understanding um but uh one one th key thing is to see what journey the church has been on okay uh, if we've been teaching on certain things and at certain levels, uh, we can actually move it up, you know, uh, and 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 take it to another level. But then um, also at the moment when you're ministering, you realize that the the congregation is not with you. Like they're not they're not with you, and you can you can easily make it out because you're asking them, you know, yes or amen, and they're not in agreement. They're not in sync. There's no response. Um, then you know that, okay, maybe I'm going too fast 
or I need to bring it down a little, I need to explain these things, right? Um, so we need to do that. So we can do it at the moment also, you know, when we... Um, uh, and the other thing which makes it a little more complex is, um, like I think your question was, in a congregation there are different people, different kinds of people. Uh, that that challenge will always be there. And that's why um, it's good to it's good to keep it simple so that it addresses everybody. Like even the ones who know, they will also be able to receive. And the ones who do not know, yes, you know, you're making it simple, you're making it understandable for them. So yeah, that's something. So, like Paul says, right, in church, I use words that are easy to understand because he's talking about praying in tongues, uh, but in a gathering so that I can communicate the truth so that. They can say an amen to that. They can receive it. So yeah, so that's the way to do it, right? Yeah. Um, so cert, it becomes difficult when you're doing a multicultural or a cross-cultural ministry. Like for example, sorry, I, I realize that uh, like like some African audiences. Like I, it's not typical of all African nations. I forget, but when you talk to them and you you're looking at them, they don't look you in the eye. Okay. So they don't look at you in the eye. Normally, when you talk to, so for them, it's like if it's an elder, if you if you look at them in the eye, it's like you're challenging their authority. So for the for them, good manners or the right thing to do to be courteous is to look away. And I think same with another ethnic group also. So I found it very difficult. So I thought they were not following me at all. You know, I'm just preaching. I'm just preaching my heart out. I'm just saying, and I'm and I'm looking at them, and they just turn away. You know, they're avoiding my eyes. And so then you know, I, I was like, God, I, I think I'm not, you know, meant for this this kind of. A, then then I realized, okay, this is the thing. I think somebody explained um, that they they actually, you know, will not. Uh, look at you in the eye. Uh, it's a sign of disrespect in the culture. So things like that. So it becomes even more complex. You know, how do you read it? How do you read the congregation? And then you're doing things online, and you can't see. <laughs> and you only see only the DP, <laughs> right? Online students. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, we'll just look at um, different types of sermons. Uh, what are there, and then we'll stop. Yeah. Okay. So. So, any other questions apart from what Rinchen asked? Um. Point three, we spoke about our prophetic governor, sir. So, uh, he, uh, like, uh, is it uh, particularly to? Like in the message, uh, what the point that we're giving can be a prophetic word or is it like the whole message can be a prophetic word yeah it can be both ways and how be. we know like what the message that we are preaching or the message that we are somebody is doing yeah. is a prophetic mm, so uh, so so you know uh, if it's spirit inspired and it's bringing edification exhortation and comfort right so maybe some parts of it, like um, it can be, it can happen at the moment. It can happen uh, at the moment of of the ministry, right? You're you're preaching, and then there is this inspiration. You know, there's inspiration, maybe about someone in the crowd. It can be as specific as that, like a you know, like a word of knowledge, or it can be like, I need to say this. You know, it's for someone here. You know, maybe it's an encouraging word. Maybe it's something to do with hope. Maybe it's hopelessness. Whatever you know, maybe it's healing. Whatever, or maybe God is showing you something visually that you. So it can happen in the course of the message that you share, right? So it can be a yeah. Is that what that was your question, right? How can how do I know it's a prophetic? Yeah. Uh, prof how do we know yeah. the message that we are preaching or somebody is preaching is a yeah. prophetic word, yeah. but? Like what you told, like if it uh, come gives edification, exaltation, and uh, comfort. comfort to someone, uh, we know. But obviously, sir, like every word from God, every yeah, message yeah. True, gives true. that comfort yeah. and speak to us, true, right? True. 
yeah so the thing is like uh, you know uh, every word need not be comforting it can be actually very troubling <laughs> right it's very convicting it can be troubling you know stir up and then uh, so all that can be there but you know we know that prophecy is uh, specifically it brings edification exhortation comfort um simple words of prophecy and it it can also be a foretelling you know future aspect also is part of it uh it can have warning etc but then um you know when you're ministering you realize that okay spirit of god is inspiring me to speak it okay it can be at that moment or it can be at the time of preparation also you know the, the very direction in which uh he is taking you right um it can be prophetic like i remember i think i've shared this with you pastor ashish um, i think one christmas morning uh like he was prepared he was he, he was thinking about what to share what you know what should i share christmas morning then no message okay yeah so from the uh, not stage you know it, those days no stage so it was from the front, first row chair to the podium so it was five steps so is a direct download of uh, you know the message called the mary miracle right it's there in um, kingdom builders about uh, that that whole chapter about the mary miracle so so that's a that's a whole message which is again prophetic in nature right so yeah so it can happen at the moment it can happen when you're preparing it can happen one aspect of truth that is you know that god wants you to emphasize and something that you didn't prepare didn't plan to say but you're saying inspired speaking is prophecy right so we yeah, can happen okay um okay i guess we'll stop we'll stop here and uh, next class we'll look at tomorrow we'll look at uh, the different kinds of types of sermon just like how we uh, looked at different types of studying the word like the word study and and topical study and so on we have different types of messages right and um, yeah so we look at each of them right okay okay thank you